Hi there, in this video we will learn about the classification of haloalkanes and haloarenes. Now, when it comes to classification, we can classify haloalkanes and haloarenes on the basis of the number of halogens present and on the basis of hybridization of carbon in this carbon halogen bond. Okay. Let's explore both of them one by one. Let's begin with the first one. The classification based on the number of halogens present. Well, this classification is quite simple. All that we have to do is count the number of halogens which are present. So, depending on the number of halogens present, if there is just one halogen present on an alkane, we will call it monohaloalkane. And if one halogen is present on a benzene ring, we will call it monohaloarene. Similarly, if two halogens are present on an alkane chain, we will call it dihaloalkane. And if uh, two halogens are present on a benzene ring, we will call it dihaloarene. And if more than two halogens are present on alkane or arene, accordingly, we shall call it polyhaloalkane or polyhaloarene respectively. Okay, let's begin with the first one, monohaloalkanes or monohaloarenes. Let's understand them with examples. Here you have an alkyl chain, right? And one halogen attached to it. So, it is a monohaloalkane. Similarly, here you can see you have a cyclohexane and one halogen again attached to it. So, this also is a monohaloalkane. What kind? A monohalocycloalkane, right? In this third one, you can see that you have a benzene ring and the halogen is directly attached to the benzene ring. So, in this case, we should call it a monohaloarene, right? Similarly, let's talk about now dihaloalkane and dihaloarene. So, here we should have two halogens. Clearly, to this alkyl chain, we have now two halogens attached. And also notice that these two attached halogens are on the adjacent carbons, right? Observe here also, we have a cyclohexane and again the two halogens attached are on the adjacent carbons, right? So, this also is a dihalocycloalkane. Now, here we have benzene rings. Here we have two halogens at, let's say, the positions 1 and 2. And here we have the halogens at positions 1 and 3, okay? Now, it is quite interesting to observe the first three examples that we have taken have the two halogens on adjacent carbons, right? But it may also be a possibility that the two halogens are present on the same carbon. So, depending on this positioning, we can further classify these dihaloalkanes as vicinal and geminal. So, we use vicinal dihalide term when the two halogens are present on adjacent carbons, right? So, this term vicinal comes from the English word vicinity. So, this halogen is in vicinity of this halogen. Can we say that? So, it's a vicinal dihalide. But a geminal dihalide is when the two halogens are present on the same carbon. Alright? Now, let's talk about the polyhaloalkanes or polyhaloarenes. So, of course, like the name suggests, there are going to be more than two number of halogens. Let's check. For example, here we have an alkyl chain to which we have how many halogens attached? 1, 2 and 3. So, number of halogens which are present here are 3. So, it's a polyhaloalkane. In this second example that we have observed, we have a benzene ring, correct? And how many halogens we have? 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, we have 4 halogens here on a benzene ring. So, it's a polyhaloarene, alright? Well, polyhaloalkane and polyhaloarene is a generic term that we can use whenever the halogens are more than 2, alright? Okay, now we will move on to the next classification. The classification which is based on the hybridization of carbon in this carbon-halogen bond. And first, we will talk about this carbon which is sp3 hybridized in this carbon-halogen bond, okay? And this one is quite interesting. So, we can have alkyl halides, we can have allylic halides, we can have benzylic halides. Now, what are alkyl halides? Alkyl halide, like the name suggests, we are going to have an alkane. What is an alkane? CnH2n plus 2. Now, from this alkane, if you remove one hydrogen, all right, let's do that. 
and put a halogen instead. That's what is going to give you an alkyl halide. Now, there can be different degrees to this alkyl halide, okay? There can be a primary alkyl halide, there can be a secondary alkyl halide, there can be a tertiary alkyl halide. We need to understand all three of them. So, let's begin with the primary alkyl halide. Here, this is an example of a primary alkyl halide. So, here this X can be any halogen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. This R dash can be any alkyl group, can be methyl, ethyl, anything. In fact, it can also be an aryl group, still it will be called as a primary halide, right? And if we are referring to it as a primary alkyl halide, let's check the number of hydrogens, 1 and 2. So, how many hydrogens we have? 2 hydrogens. That is going to make one primary alkyl halide. Similarly, we can understand a secondary alkyl halide. So, to this carbon, we have two alkyl groups present and one hydrogen attached, right? So, number of hydrogens present on this carbon atom of sp3 hybridized carbon halogen bond if it is equal to 1. In that case, we are going to call it a secondary alkyl halide, okay? And if let's say there is zero hydrogen present to this carbon, all three are going to be alkyl groups, then we are going to have, you got it tertiary alkyl halide you can check so if number of hydrogens present on the carbon atom of sp3 hybridized carbon halogen bond so on this carbon if zero hydrogens are present then we are going to call it a tertiary alkyl halide okay so alkyl halide can be one degree two degree or three degree which we can simply write like this now let's move on to again another category of the compounds containing this sp3 hybridized carbon halogen bond but now the category name is allylic halide. So, what are these allylic halides? Let's understand. The halogen atom bonded to an sp3 hybridized carbon atom which is directly attached to a carbon-carbon double bond, what we call as allylic carbon. So, precisely this is an allylic carbon, this carbon. So, there's this carbon-carbon double bond. You have a single bond and this carbon. To this carbon, if the halogen is attached, we're going to call it allylic halide. Can we check the hybridization of this carbon? Let's count the total number of sigma bonds. So, this carbon, this is one sigma bond. There are two hydrogens and one halogen. Clearly, the hybridization of this carbon is sp3 hybridized, right? And let me tell you, if you put the halogen on this carbon, then there is a different category that will come into picture. But here, the name is allylic halide. Mind you, there has to be a doubly bonded system, a single bond attached to it, and then a halogen, okay? So, read this once again. Halogen atom bonded to sp3 hybridized carbon atom, which is directly attached to so, this is sp3 hybridized carbon atom, for example, directly attached to this double bond. So, this also is an example of allylic halide. All right. Now, let's move on to benzylic halide. Now, what are benzylic halides? Well, halogens which are bonded to sp3 hybridized carbon atom, which is directly attached to the benzene ring. Okay. Now, it's not carbon-carbon double bond. We are talking about now benzene ring. Let's understand it with the structures. So, here you can see we have a benzene ring. This is the sp3 hybridized carbon. Check. Carbon attached to this benzene ring through a sigma bond. So, two hydrogens and one halogen. Four sigma bond. That means, yes, this carbon is sp3 hybridized. And hence, we are going to call this halide as benzylic halide. If we talk about this carbon, this shall be called as benzylic carbon, okay? This sp3 hybridized carbon is a benzylic carbon and the halide shall be called as benzylic halide. Similarly, instead of these hydrogens, even if you have alkyl groups, one alkyl group or two alkyl groups, doesn't matter, then also we are going to call it benzylic halides, all right? Now, what if the hybridization is not sp3? We can have different hybridizations. The answer is yes. There can be the halogen attached to compounds containing sp2 hybridized carbon halogen bond. Accordingly, we shall call it vinylic halides or aryl halide. Let's understand them one by one. So, what are vinylic halides? The question that I asked you, what if the halogen is attached directly to the carbon double bond carbon? So, halogen atom when it is attached to this 
sp2 hybridized carbon atom of a carbon carbon double bond check this out so this is the carbon carbon double bond this is that carbon that we are talking about as sp2 hybridized carbon to which the halogen is attached so check this out while talking about the hybridization we don't include the pi bonds so yes the hybridization is equal to the total number of sigma bonds since there are three sigma bonds so steric number is three so it is going to be sp2 hybridized carbon and if the halogen is attached to this sp2 hybridized carbon we are calling it as vinylic halide so is this one check we have a carbon double bond and to this sp2 hybridized carbon we have the halogen attached so yes this is also a vinylic halide now what are aryl halides aryl halide the term aryl we use for benzene right so this is self-explanatory that halogen when it is attached to sp2 hybridized carbon atom of aromatic ring in our case it's going to be benzene ring of course so yes benzene ring you can see directly if the halogen is attached that is what we are calling as aryl halide okay so this can be a substituted benzene also so halogen out here is attached to this substituted benzene and if the halogen is directly attached to the benzene ring mind you it shall not be alkyl halide but aryl halide now to clear the air i have a very interesting question for you check this out which of the following is an example of alkyl aryl halide yeah that's right alkyl aryl halide para chlorotoluene chlorobenzene allyl chloride benzyl chloride what do you think pause the video and give me an answer all right the interesting part is the moment you see this aryl halide that means the halogen is directly attached to the benzene ring Okay, let's check option A. Option A is para chlorotoluene. So you have a CH3 group and you have a chloro group attached at the para position. Clearly, you can see that the halo group is directly attached to the benzene ring. This is our aryl halide, isn't it? And that's what we have to hunt for an aryl halide to which an alkyl group is attached. And yes, alkyl group is attached here. So yes, we have got our answer, but let's also check option B now, chlorobenzene. Okay, so directly we have a chlorobenzene. This is an aryl halide, but there is no alkyl here. You understand? We have to find out alkyl aryl halide. Now let's check option C. It is allyl chloride. We know already what is an allyl chloride, right? So this sp3 hybridized carbon, which is directly attached to carbon-carbon double bond. So this is our allyl chloride and of course not alkyl aryl halide. Now let's see option D. Option D is, let's write it here. Option D is benzyl chloride, CH2Cl. Now this out here shall not be called as aryl halide because the chlorine is attached to the alkyl group and not the aryl group. And for it to be called aryl halide, we need to have the halogen directly attached to the benzene ring. So we got the answer. Answer to this question shall be option A. All right. Now, here is yet another question, same question, but now I have reframed it like this. Aryl alkyl halide. Come on, which of the following is an example of aryl alkyl halide? So, there has to be a benzene ring, but the halogen should now be attached to alkyl group. Come on, I've given you enough hint. Go ahead with the options. We have already decoded all the four options. Tell me which of the following shall be aryl alkyl halide feel free to pause the video. All right, hope you could do it. Let's take help from the previous question only, okay? Check this out. So here in option A, this was clearly an alkyl aryl halide. It cannot be aryl alkyl halide, right? Because we have the halogen directly attached to the benzene ring. B is just an aryl halide. C is of course directly allyl halide. D is benzyl chloride. Now, this clearly looks like an answer because we have a benzene ring. Okay. We have the halogen attached to the alkyl group. Okay. And that is what we were hunting for. This is clearly an alkyl halide. And since benzene is also attached to it, what shall we call it? That's right. We shall call it an aryl alkyl halide. So, 
there you go. This species out here, the benzyl chloride becomes the answer for this question.